Now, World Bank Nigeria says Nigeria has a large electricity access deficit. The lender claims lack of access to the electricity grid affects 45% of the population, which accounts for about 90 million people. Large disparities exist in access to electricity between urban areas and rural ones. In order to bridge this gap, the federal government of Nigeria, Niger Delta Power Holding Company, Lagos, Ogun and Oyo states have agreed on a bilateral trade to distribute 4,000 megawatts electricity to the extensive industrial and business clusters in Abara and throughout Nigeria. The Nigerian electricity supply industry is evolving regulatory framework and the declaration of eligible customers, according to the NDPHC, have created opportunities for the industry to revolutionize and end solutions that increase electricity access for Nigerian homes and businesses and lessen the financial burden on the federal government's balance sheet. My guest on the, on the show this morning is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, Mr. Chiodu Uba. Mr. Ogo, it's a pleasure to have you on the show this morning. Thank How are you, you today? Much. I'm very good. Very well. Well, let's begin with Nigeria's electricity chain and highlight some of the key issues that are affecting transmission, generation and distribution as we are today. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, we, we, uh, of course, obviously there are challenges in the sector. Um, however, the challenges are more in the network uh, area, that's transmission and distribution, than you have in generation. As such, today, um, the installed capacity in generation in Nigeria is somewhere around 13,000 megawatts. Of course, um, if you add Zungeru, um, it's closing up to 14,000. So there is some significant uh, improvement in generation. I mean, in generation capacity, uh, not actual generation. How you see that of these 13,000, um, if you ask generation companies to come up, they should be able to bring up uh, at least 8,000 megawatts or between seven and 8,000 megawatts. That's what we call available capacity. About actual generation today is somewhere around 5,000 megawatts. And that is because um, the ability, the capabilities to um, to evacuate uh, through the transmission and then deliver to distribution and end users uh, limits that um, actual generation to 5,000 megawatts. Okay. Um, so generation, it has no problems, not much problems apart from gas. But gas is a factor, availability of gas is a factor of the commercial arrangement in the sector, the liquidity of the sector, and um, what we are dealing with that, the government is dealing with that, the government is resolving that. Of course, you can see there is a minister of state now in charge of gas. Those are some of the reasons that inform that. For transmission, a lot of um, uh, investment is required. Uh, and the uh, government is doing that through uh, the transmission expansion plan. Um, a lot of work is being done. There was some CBM funding again to expand the transmission uh, uh, network. Uh, distribution area as well, a lot is being done, particularly in the area of collection efficiency. That's in the area of mass metering, um, which the government has also come up with Nigeria mass uh, metering program. It's ongoing, work is ongoing. I can tell you, sitting at meetings with the regulator, they are focusing on that, they are, they are monitoring that um, effectively. But that's the, the, the challenge. So distribution has challenge with the network to um, improve um, uh, access in terms of um, having the, 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 the pools and wires in place, injection substations, investment is required there. Um, transmission, we need more substations, we need more lines. Uh, in all these areas, my company, NDPAC, we've done a lot, a lot of work in providing transmission infrastructure. By the way, NDPAC implements the government's uh, national integrated power projects, the so-called NIPP. And we have tons of um, projects in transmission completed, uh, many projects in distribution completed to improve that. But just recently, just like you mentioned, uh, with this new government coming, His Excellency, the Vice President, thought that we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have uh, 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 stranded generation in the power plants. We should target industrial areas. We should target uh, clusters. We should make sure that we bring this uh, available uh, generation to homes and to businesses, and that's exactly what we are doing. Right, and yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure there, is, there are so many points we would like to touch on, and, and I like that you've also touched on the operational yeah. framework, yes. because that could be a little blurry sometimes, so it's yeah. good to understand. We understand that um, the NDPHC, for instance, over, oversees 10 independent power plants. Yes, if right. I'm wrong, please yeah. correct me. Uh, eight or 10? Ten, eight, uh, eight 
it um it has been completed in the on the grid uh to uh, under construction uh that it gives you approximately 4000 megawatts in stored capacity um the the, the ones under construction uh, will add about 1000 megawatts later so we have total design capacity of about 5000 megawatts out of which we have delivered 4,000 megawatts so far. All right, it's yeah. great to get some clarity yeah, 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 on that. Yeah, yeah. But now let's talk about this bilateral agreement. It yeah. sounds very exciting. 4,000 megawatts. Let's get some more details around that. Yeah, so, yeah, we have 4,000 megawatts on, I mean, sitting, um, delivered, constructed in the power plants, um, bearing every, um, bearing um, uh, the routine maintenance you should have, and of course the, the temperature in the area site conditions, we should have 3,003 3, about that available all the time. Uh, however, um, due to the systemic challenges, you find out that, that we're, we are dispatched. What I mean dispatched, I mean the, the transmission company calls us up to the grid, maybe 500 megawatts on average. Um, and that is not good. When this vice president, his excellency, the vice president, can say, that is not good. How can a company don't be doing less than about 20, 25% of its capacity, that's not good. So we need to get, and Nigerians need this electricity. So we have a program of now, uh, the bilateral arrangements, which as approved by the regulator. So generation companies can sell directly to uh, end users that can consume up to two megawatts. Okay. Yeah, so, that way you, you can freely bypass distribution or you can work with distribution companies. And that's what we are doing. So instead of going through the MBET, uh, MBET is a Nigerian bulk electricity trading, is a 100% owned government company. Uh, of course, generation companies will be comfortable selling to MBET uh, so that they know that MBET pays them because that's a challenge, the money. So when you set to embed, you get there's always a shortfall from right. distribution companies to embed, and that shortfall um, sits with embed and sits on the government balance sheet because the generation companies will record that we are being owed so much. I mean, the 27 or 25 odd generation companies they are all owed somewhere around one trillion or over now. That sits with the government, and debt with the government is never a bad debt. They will get that, but if that is not good enough for us. We cannot continue that way. And the important thing for us is to get the electricity to Nigerians. So we have to contract bilaterally, directly, stop putting this indebtedness in government balance sheet. I contract with, for example, the Agbara industrial uh, uh, community. They owe me. We put structures in place. I supply them electricity and make sure that my electricity doesn't fail. And of course, there are uh, measures in place to ensure that they also pay for the electricity. So that's whatever happens between us, it's outside the government's uh, balance sheet. Um, if they owe me, I have a right of enforcement directly. I don't have to be looking at government to come and pay me. And that's the way the sector should go. We have said just investors should come, franchise these areas, and let generation companies serve them. Even transmission, the transmission expansion programs, let the private sector come in. We do what they call independent uh, transmission projects, which I've always advocated, and it's, it's, it's happening uh, elsewhere in the world. Let the private sector come, um, take some transmission line substation, make the investment, do the economics, recover your money uh, over time, 10 years, 20 years, and that way, you know, you will see that there will be serious improvement in terms of transmission infrastructure and in terms of electricity delivery to Nigerians. All right. I mean, yeah. it's certainly refreshing to hear yeah. that we see in some sort of motion yeah. on, on that now. But let's talk about execution. What time frame has been put in place for this? And more importantly, what could stand in the way of getting to that execution? So we, for us, I mean, we are, I mean, we are the, His Excellency, the Vice President, who is the Chairman of the Board of NDPC, by the way, has charged us, has given us a maximum of six months. And I have to deliver. My team is working to ensure that we deliver within the six months. Where if there is anything that would affect us, I, I can't foresee that now, but if there is, could be some mac macroeconomic challenges. Uh, but we are working, and His Excellency, the Vice President, is leading this charge. So even if we have any issues, he's there to resolve. He was there in Agbara, you know, in person, 
to ensure, to assure them that we will deliver and we will deliver. Our duty is to implement it, set the tone, and we will deliver. NDPSC is known for delivery in terms of projects, and it's not a problem. We have contractors ready who are even ready to deliver this in less than six months. And once that's done, so you will see it, we invite right, you. Well, we, I mean, we have yeah. your word on it. Yes, yes. On the Global will, Business Report, we'll we, hold you to it. Yes, please hold us to our word. We have, we've signed up with the Bado Disco and some private sector again for Otter and Shagamu areas, business areas, we will deliver that. We're signing up with some business in Kano and you know, in Kaduna, we will deliver those. Likewise, also in Anambra and the rest of the country, we will deliver. We are working assiduously to make sure we deliver. Right, and that's very refreshing yes. to hear. But you see, I can't have you on the show, Mr. Why not ask your opinion around the subsidy removal issue. What is your take on that? Where do you lean? Subsidy in power or in... In power. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, if you want to get electricity right, the cost must be properly computed from beginning from gas for gas tamer to when it gets to end users. And you know the cost you arrive at the tariff. If you know the tariff, if the tariff is too heavy, there are only two people who can pay, the consumers. Yeah? That's the rate payers or the taxpayers through the government. So whichever way, it has to be paid. If you want steady, reliable, and affordable electricity, it has to be paid for. Um, the government, it's, so whether the government pays for a true subsidy, that will be political. The, every government will have to listen to its citizens and check the ability of its citizens to pay. If the burden is too much, then the government has to take on that. And I believe the government should be able to assist Nigerians to pay for the electricity. That's my opinion. Right. Yeah, because electricity, uh, uh, the cost of electricity is directly proportional to the per capita income. If people do not have the ability to pay then the government, and it's social good in a sense, then the government should be able to come in and pay. That's my opinion. But the truth remains that the cost has to be paid. And people should also learn to manage the consumption. So it's a mix. Government should uh, uh, determine, because again, you don't put, want to put so much burden on government. <laughs> uh, people should be able to manage, should be able to manage their consumption. Uh, and even if government is intervening, okay, let me put it this way. Even if government is intervening, it has to be for a short period of time. Not only a short period. Yeah. You yes. don't see that being long term at no, all. No, 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 no. That's if you if you want electricity, you have to pay for it. That's the truth. So but what I'm hearing is the responsibility lies on both sides. Yeah. yeah. And not hinged on the government. You, yeah, yeah. You, it they don't have it to shouldn't, it shouldn't be placed quite on government. Right. Okay, let's talk about the future globally. Let's open the conversation a bit wider. But we're beginning to see more of a faster mental shift towards renewables. Where do you see Nigeria in relation to that? Yeah, so, so we, we are working, Nigeria is, I mean, Nigeria has policy on energy mix, which is 30-30-30, I mean, 30, on, um, at least for renewables, 30% uh, of the energy uh, sources in Nigeria should be renewable. And so Nigeria is keen into what is happening all, all over the world. But by the way, my own opinion, um, which is in support of what has always been said, it's not original to me, is that gas should remain as the transition fuel yeah, towards the, I think, 2016 the zero uh, 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 program of the government. I think we should be able to optimize our resources. And the important thing is that we must ensure energy security. And the easiest way for us now, right now in Nigeria, to ensure energy security is to um, uh, utilize our gas resources to provide electricity to Nigerians. So the important thing is energy security underpinned by optimization of your resources. And Nigeria is a huge gas territory. So we must rely on the gas as the transition fuel. Right. And, and we have abundance of it, so why not take yeah, advantage not? of yes, that, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. But in wrapping up, I want to touch on maintenance as another key issue. I mean, of course, we've seen um, a drop in generation capacity a couple, just even a couple of weeks ago. Let's talk about the state of the power plants in relation to maintenance. What measures have been put in place to secure that for the future? No, I, I think, you know, it's um, power plants, they are machines. Yeah. And 
there are protocols of how you run them. Uh, there are, you have two types of maintenance. You have the scheduled, that's the planned maintenance, which is the normal maintenance. If you run certain hours, you should do certain maintenance, and you have them planned because they are machines, certain things can happen. So for the scheduled maintenance, taking a uh, uh, Niger data power holding power plants, for example, we have what we, have, what we call long-term service agreements that ensure that we do that regularly, and we do that regularly. Uh, for the unscheduled, when things happen, of course, you also carry out the maintenance. They do happen, but you ensure that it's not a major equipment damage because you must run according to uh, the manual uh, provided by the OEM. But for us, we have the OEM on site. What affects maintenance more is the availability of the parts. And this is a factor of the macroeconomic issues like the exchange rates. Uh, you find out that importing the parts is getting the USD to import the parts is a challenge for generation companies. But nevertheless, the power plants, I haven't seen any generation company complaining of maintenance apart from the fact that it's difficult to get the foreign exchange to carry to import these parts. One. Two, because of the the the, the, the frequency issues in transmission. Um, you find out that the generation plants are not running the way they should run on straight line, but you see up and down, and sometimes you are being put off. Um, we have what they call turbine stress. It affects that. So what that means is that your cost of maintenance goes up. Uh, you have to buy parts all the time, and then in buying these parts, you face the challenge, the foreign exchange challenge. But I think the government, this government is addressing that squarely, uh, squarely, 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 to ensure that the generation companies have access to the forex that allows them to import parts to make sure they carry their maintenance as uh, uh, as frequently as possible. All right, look, sounds like lots to look forward to, yeah, and there's a light yes. at the end of the tunnel, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really. Definitely. <laughs> All right, definitely, then, Mr. Chiodo, yeah. I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank Many you very thanks. much.